Switching from Windows to a Mac, here's what you need to know. First, I wanna share some things that I had to learn to get most out of your Macintosh. Do people still call them that? <laughs> the trackpad is one of the best features of the MacBook, and to get the most out of it, you need to change a couple settings. I have the laptop on my lap, but I'm gonna be showing you some settings to change. For this setting, go to Settings, Accessibility, Pointer Control, click trackpad options and change drag style, dragging style to three finger drag. Basically, I'll just show it off like this. You get three of your fingers, you select the things you wanna do with the three fingers, and then you can just move them without even clicking. It, it is hard to get used to, but once you get used to it, it is really easy than just clicking down and then with your other finger, you have to move everything around. It's just three fingers. This same thing works with the text. Hot Corners is a feature that allows you to set actions to each corner of your screen. And to change this setting, go to Settings, Desktop and Dock, and scroll all the way down and click Hot Corners. And as you can see, you can assign four different actions for each corner of your screen. But when you click on it, you have a bunch more settings. You can do quick note, lunch pad, but I just keep it minimal for the left and right corners. You can experiment and find your desired action. If you don't like any, you can just click the dash and just keep it blank. Finder app is where all of the files are stored in the Mac. Unlike Windows, the desktop is more for aesthetics than function. To make your navigation easier on the Finder app, click view and show path bar. Another really good tip that I never heard from anyone is if you need multiple Finder windows, you can do that by clicking Option, Command, N. This way it will open another Finder window. Copying and pasting files are also a bit different. To cut a file in Windows, it's Command X. In here, you copy it normally, Command C, and paste it into a new location by pressing the keys, Command Option V. And this is the way to cut a file. If you use an external storage, this is critical. By default, Windows formats drives to NTFS filing system, which macOS can only read and not write. To fix this, you need to reformat the drive to XFAT. EXFAT? XFAT? I'm gonna call it XFAT. This is a universal filing system that works both in Windows and Mac. First, you need to back up all of your files because we're going to format the drive. Plug in your drive, right click, select erase disk, then select XFAT and confirm. While you can get apps like iVoiceSoft NTFS or for your Mac to read your drives, for these type of applications, some of the features are paid and for your personal drives, I think it's better to format it and get it done in the first place. I went through a bunch of apps and I'm going to share with you the ones that I picked. First, I'm starting off with a controversial one. It's gonna be heated, but there's a good reason for it. Most of us coming from Windows are already using Chrome as the primary browser. All of your passwords, bookmarks, and extensions are tied to Chrome, which can make easier to switch to a Mac. Chrome also has features like auto tab grouping and most importantly, ad block. I use Chrome because it's familiar familiar, functional, and again, most importantly, ad block. I tried using Safari, but I just like how Chrome looks and I, I, I don't want ads in my YouTube videos. <laughs> you can 100% use Safari, but if you were already using Chrome and all your data is in there, I think it will make it an easier switch to just use Chrome in your new Mac too. Notable features you would get by using Safari is when you're looking at a tab in your Mac, you can continue looking at the same tab on your iPhone. One of the things that immediately stood out to me is how scrolling works when you connect a mouse. By default, macOS reverses the scrolling directions on mouses. Scrolling up moves the page down, and while that might seem intuitive on a trackpad, it seems very off on a mouse. A lot of people suggest to turn off natural scrolling, but when you switch it off, it fixes the problem in the mouse, but now it reverses the scrolling feature on the trackpad. It's one or the other. The better solution is to install scroll reversal. Rever reversal. Reverser. Rever <laughs> scroll rev rever 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 reverse. Rev I can't say, I can't speak anymore. Scroll re scroll scroll. Scroll reverser. Scroll, scroll reverser. reverser, that app, get that. <laughs> this app lets you control the scrolling direction on the mouse separately. Just install it and check reverse mouse. If you ever used Ear Trumpet on Windows, this app will feel familiar. Background music will let you control the volume of individual apps. It's especially useful when trying to screen record because macOS doesn't let you record internal audio while screen recording. Apple claims that this is a security feature, but it's a big limitation, no one cares. With background music, you can select 
selected as the audio source and while the screen recording you will also get the system audio. On Windows, Task Manager is a quick way to see your system's performance. On macOS, you can get a familiar function with the app Stats. This app gives you an overview of your CPU, GPU, RAM and much more of your system settings. It's a great app if you're a nerd like me and want to see all of the utilization. In Windows, Alt-Tab is a widely used function that is used to switch between apps and when used you can see the preview screen of each app. In macOS, Command Tab only shows you the app icon, which some people may not like. To fix this, you can download the app called Alt-Tab self-explanatory, which brings preview windows for each app when you're command tabbing. One of the best features in Windows is window snapping to resize the windows. While macOS recently added this feature, people are still using this app to resize their windows. Rectangle is a free app that allows you to snap your windows to resize them and you can also add customizable shortcuts. Now I'm going to give you apps that are more for convenience. Grab to text. It's a great app when you're trying to extract text from an image or a part of your screen. This is also a native macOS feature, but to use that, you have to take a screenshot, go inside the screenshot, then copy the text. This app just makes it quicker. The taskbar can quickly become cluttered. With the app hidden bar, you can hide unnecessary app icons. Switching to a Mac might feel overwhelming at first, but with the tips and apps that I gave you, hope it makes it easier for you to close the gap and switch over. All of the app download links are going to be down in the description. I try to give more general apps that most people are going to use. Like you can install Brew for coding, but that's just such a niche group of people that you know most people are not going to care about. And with that, don't forget to like and subscribe.